next to Carlos and modifies slightly the title. So now we have this precision test at the NHC, and I will show that also already HTV is enough to do some precision tests at the NHC, which makes sense and can compete with the other measurements done before. Okay. So this, uh, what I will say, is based on this paper. The other author of this paper is also around. Just uh, to be. Uh, okay, yes, it's around. And uh, also the work in progress with another author present here. Now, what I, I'm talking about, okay, the title of the you, uh, I want to tell. And um, I want to see whether LHC can be used not only as a discovery machine, okay, as we usually think about hadronic colliders, but also as a machine which is able to test with precision some electronic processes. Okay? Now, the basic feature almost everybody has in mind is that hadronic uh, machines basically test the energy frontier. Okay? Do it direct searches, and indeed LHC has done quite well in this direction, already putting strong bounds at 8 TB and continuing at 30 TB. In an orthogonal direction, we usually think that we can test precision <coughs> okay, by doing accurate measurements, such as the one done at the end. There may be also talk they were differentiating between accuracy and precision, but uh, that's experimental. <laughs> Okay, accuracy or precision for me more or less are the same. So, uh, I will reduce them in that way. Now, prototypes of these two kinds of machines are, of course, LHC and LAP. Okay? We know, uh, however, that uh, although LHC is doing progress in putting bounds, uh, LAP bound from LAP, for instance, of the electronic uh, oblique parameters, still are competed with the bounds from the LHC. For instance, in universal theories, uh, or classes of theories which can be approximated by universal theories, let me say, lap bounds are still strong. Okay? Lap, for instance, the S parameter tested the presence of new vector states uh, well, to a mass of the order of 3, 4 TBs, okay? which is comparable to the present bounds uh, coming from the LHC. Now, of course, I'm not talking anymore so much about LEP, but I want to see if LHC, instead of testing just the energy frontier, can do something between. Okay? If we can get use of the high energy of the LHC, together with some amount of accuracy, <coughs> to improve our knowledge about the electronic measurements. Okay? So I will explore this, talk, this other direction, and the LHC, and more in general, at Adam colliders. Now, of course, if you ask, uh, are there some couplings uh, or uh, things which we can measure with precision in the LHC, which were not measured at the left? Trivial answer, yes. Of course, for the X, for instance, which was not testable in previous colliders, LHC is doing precision measurements. Okay? But this is not the focus of the talk, because today I will talk about uh, electronic measurements, okay, which were done at LEP. Okay. I want to see if LHC can also improve there, not only in searches which were not possible at previous colliders, but also in searches and precision measurements which were done at previous colliders. To understand uh, what's going on here, it's useful to, to use the EFT approach. Okay. Now, why the FT? Because uh, we want to specify an explicit model. We want to treat this in general as more or less was done at LEP with oblique parameters, for instance. As we basically all know, in the FT approach, <coughs> we can write uh, a, an approximation of a BSM Lagrangian in terms of the standard model Lagrangian expanded with uh, a series of uh, higher higher dimension operators. Okay. The series starts with dimension 6 operator, ignoring dimension 5, which break uh, left the number, and continue with higher order operators. In many theories, uh, dimension 6 operators give the leading contribution to the physics. 
this. Okay, so in this talk I will concentrate on this. But what I say, in particular theories in which dimension eight or higher can be important, more relevant than dimension six can be applied as well. How can we try to test this kind of new operators and the ellipse? Okay? Now the key ingredient of course is the fact that we can access high energy, which was not possible for instance at length. Now, what happens at high energy if such operators are present? In general, for each dimension 6 or higher dimension operator, we can identify one or more processes in which the amplitude of the standard model plus the PSM contribution okay, over the amplitude standard model behaves like 1 plus a piece which grows with the energy of the event, okay? Typically quadratically in some cases, in other cases grow linearly, depends on the process. I put in front a coefficient which uh, is not fully specified, this is specified only when we decide what kind of theory we want to look at, or in other words, what kind of power counting we associate with this effective function. Looking at this formula, it becomes immediately clear why going high energy we can do better, or we can do something comparable with what we did at LEP. Okay? Of course, LEP tested in electronic measurements such effects, but at an energy scale of order of 100 GB. Okay? In many measurements, such as oblique electronic parameters, LEP could reach an accuracy of 0.1%, okay? one per million. Now, if we look at these contributions, they grow quadratically with energy. So, if we go up in energy to LHC energies of order 1 TV, we see that the correction of order 0.1% becomes a correction of 10% if we have this quadratic scale. Okay? Of course, 0.1% is out of reach at the LHC. We cannot imagine many processes in which we, go, we can go below percent with accuracy just because of systematic uncertainties, okay? which in many cases cannot be reduced below the 3% level. However, the 10% level can be reached at the LHC, okay? If we have particularly clean channels, okay? And there are a few examples of this, which I will give in the future. We can opt to test this 10%, with this 10% accuracy, these new operators. And this will compare the hyperbound of the coefficient, which can be comparable with what we did at okay? Now, question? When we, at, oh. that, at, at that, of course, uh, we replace high energy by resonant contributions. We have, uh, we measure at the pole of the sea in most of these observations. And then, uh, so energy is not a good description of that, uh, to, to see how much you need. What is it? This is a good description if we talk about the two. Right, okay. is a I will give an example in which yeah. this is exactly the case for lep two. But also, yeah. also yes, for, of course, <coughs> for S and T at lep you measure the pole where you have more course. statistics. But you're always limit, limited by the systematic accuracy, of course. of course, which is permitted. Okay, of course, you cannot test uh, at the pole S and T at the LHC. Okay, but I will show you that uh, you can uh, thanks to this at the pole you don't really have this aspect. You have the another aspect because sure. of the cross section but in any case you can identify for the same operators some other process which cross with the energy okay and this can do the job for the LHC but I will give an explicit example for this later on when we talk about the practical theory of course we need to pay attention to a few important points okay now first of all looking at this expression okay we see that there are some limitations okay some bounds on the amount of correction we can have with respect to a standard model within the range of validity of an effective field theory. Indeed, for an effective field theory to be valid, we need, for sure, the energy we probe at the, in the experiment to be lower than the cutoff. Okay? So this implies immediately that the factor P square over lambda square is always smaller, or much smaller than one. Okay? Of course, the coefficient in front will depend on the power counting we assume. However, in many cases, 
this is uh, smaller over the order of one. Okay. There are a few exceptions in which this can be large. Okay. It's a gauge half length. Yes. If the gauge half length is larger than one, I mean, then it will be larger than one. <coughs> Depends on the process you're, you're looking the operator you're looking at and on the power cutting assumption. And sure, sure, but yeah, there's a large class, yeah. UV completions where it can be open. There are some classes of UV completions where it can be the, the ones I will I will talk about have more or less this feature. Okay? In any case it's hard to compete with this but we back with the with the area. In, in any case, with the assumption of such type we obtained that the correction with respect to the standard model, okay, delta A over A standard model is always smaller than one. Okay. This tells us that in a situation like this, in order to get precision, we need to measure this process with an accuracy better than the standard model. Okay. If we have just an order one accuracy, this is not enough to get any sensible bound within the validity of an effective theory on this kind of operators. Okay, if we have uh, some enhancement here because of particular power counting, we could change this estimate. But in any case, there would be an upper bound. Okay, so we cannot go to arbitrary bad accuracy and uh, infer some bound which is uh, uh, sensible in a valid effective theory. Okay. Um, another important point is that uh, since I will stick to this kind of theories, the most important uh, contribution to, um, to the BSM uh, amplitude okay, comes from, uh, typically from the interference between the standard model and the BSM contributions. Okay? I will have to square this to get the... Uh, so, the so what? So you're assuming it's a CP conserving, but if it's CP violation, then there's no interference. There is no inter I, I'm not assuming that the operators I will consider are CP conserving. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's exactly if what the, I'm saying. If there is no yeah. interference, the situation is much worse than this. I'm saying that if there is interference, this is the best situation because we have a linear piece. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. If there is no interference, you are in worse situation because you need to square something which is more. Yeah. Okay, so the best situation is the one with interference, okay, in which the domain term is linear in the PSM. Okay, the quadratic piece in this situation is something. Um, of course, when we put these bounds, we also have to pay particular attention to the cutoff. Okay, so one procedure which I will follow is to derive the bounds on the coefficient of these operators as a function of the cutoff as well. Okay? So putting a cutoff on the maximal energy of the events we are considering and also understanding how the bounce varies with this cutoff. This will give us a more control on the effective field theory and will ensure that the results we find are valid within the, validity, within the range of validity of the effective field theory. In the following, I'll consider two examples. Okay, the first uh, we can consider mostly as a, a kind of toy example. Okay, and a proof of principle that a program like this can really happen, and indeed can be carried out already at the LHC already with the present measurements. Okay, so the first example I will consider is Drelian uh, by Layton production okay. at the LFC. Afterwards, I will consider also another channel, dye boson production, which however is a bit more complicated than this, and for that we do not have yet a complete analysis, so I will give you just some uh, <coughs> uh, highlights and a few preliminary results. So, why the electron? Okay. The electron, given the consideration I made before, we want accuracy, we want uh, uh, to have large, small errors, uh, is uh, a very good channel. Why? Because we have a large cross section. Okay. Large cross section. This is also a clean channel. Final state with leptons. Okay. So small systematic uncertainties. 
Um, moreover, one can show that in this process one has leading order interference between the standard model, which is the relative bit, and the BSM contributions. Okay? And so this also helps in making the uh, BSM corrections larger. Okay? So all these points tell us that this is a very simple channel to carry out our program. Okay, so uh, let's see what we can do with this. To be even uh, to keep the analysis even simpler, okay, I will restrict to a particular set of operators <coughs> which are called the oblique corrections, basically the one with the left. Okay? And I will further restrict to oblique correction which are described by dimension 6 operators. In this case, we get only four operators of dimension 6 which contribute. Okay. So. Oblique corrections, there are four operators. The first one is the S parameter. Okay. Okay, this is S. The second, as you can imagine, is T. And then there are two less known parameters, which are the W. and y okay these are the four parameters i focus on so no hat w y you have it written without hat what is u in these spaces u is dimension 8 mm -hmm. u and the other ones are dimension 8 so i will not consider them in, the, in this analysis now, these are the four operators I will focus on, okay? To give a reference, uh, let measure the, all of them, okay? The first two at left one, at the pole of the Z, the second two at left two, in the tail of the distribution, and the, 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 the precision on all of them, okay? Delta S, delta T, delta W, and delta Y, is smaller than 10 to minus 3. Or of order that you Okay? So, the precision we try to achieve is something we need to compare then with this 10 to the minus 3, which was obtained at length. And what plays the role of the. What is the cutoff in this. Uh, so, we discuss all of this uh, in, in lots of details afterwards. So. Uh, so if we, especially when you see these constraints, of course we all know what are the correlations between S hat and T hat. Mm -hmm. Can you please remind what are the correlations of W and Y with the S and T? How they are and how strong they are? W Y with S and T? How do they exist? I don't know. I don't know. They are very correlated. Yeah, they are, when you have experimental constraints, yeah, they are all correlated. There is a 4x4 four four correlation map of switch course. with large order 0.5 correlations. Yeah, but are, they com are these correlations comparable to, let's say, ST correlation or the weaker? I think they are comparable. Mm -hmm. okay, they're, they're comparable. Okay. All four are comparable. Sorry? They're all comparable. Yeah. All, ah. comparable. Yeah. all four are measured on the Z pole, so they're all, and they're all comparably correlated. Yeah. But WY are also measured in the tape. Yeah. yeah. So, all four are measured at left one. W and Y are also measured at left two. The precision for W Y from left one and left two are comparable. All four are comparably correlated. Okay, so yeah, okay, so S and T is the most correlated. Yeah, but uh, so because there is correlation coefficient is point nine, yeah, but the, the others also have point order point five correlation. Okay, so the other one correlated. No. Um, Yes, so these are the four, uh, the four operators, okay? And this can be seen as... Uh, 
<laughs> okay. Now, these corrections can be seen as corrections to the uh, electroweak gate boson propagators. Okay? Basically, in a process, corrections that affect okay, the so this is L, L or neutrino that affect the W, the, the Z, or the gamma propagators. Okay, we have written in this form. Now, an important thing to understand is how they affect this propagator which will give us an idea of how they modify the amplitude for this kind of process and how we can test them at the LHC okay? and at the level, of course, but the testing number Now, which is the form of the propagator when I turn on these four operators? Now, let's start with the neutral one, okay? the propagator for the Z and for the gamma Of course, there will be an upper two part okay? which is the photon pole then there will be zeros here, and there will be the z pole. Okay. When I turn on these four operators, I will find additional corrections. Here. Okay. That scale like as at t x w y. I won't write the exact expression because it's very long. But it has the same form as this. So these are just the corrections of the pole. Okay. This will introduce also some off-diagonal terms with the same structure. Okay. On top of this, there are some other corrections which do not scale like one of the two. And these corrections, as you can imagine from this, are coming only from WY because they are the only two operators with two additional derivatives. Okay. So WY will introduce a correction of this form okay another one here and another one here okay now this is this one is the same so I won't write it down then maybe now there is an important difference between the two say operators S and T and W1 okay S and T only modify the pole. Okay. So the overall effect at the LHC would be well, a change of the cross section, but the total cross section cannot be measured better than a few percent of units. So for S and T, in this process, there's more to win with respect to length. However, if we look at WY, they modify the propagators with the constant piece. So with respect to the standard model piece, <coughs> if we go at high energy, we get a quadratic growth with the energy which is exactly the effect I was discussing before. So we can try to use these additional pieces in the propagator in order to get a better accuracy, okay? Try to measure at a few percent in this process of high energy in order to exploit the higher energy to put better products. Something similar happens also for the charged propagator, which has a piece, of course, which is the usual upper two propagator, Another piece which depends on Z, T, X, W, Y and a constant piece. In this case, it depends only on W, not on Y. Okay? So from neutral processes, we can extract the information on W, Y. From the charged process, at the neutrino, we can extract the information on W. Okay? Now, I will use this in order to extract bounds, so I will try to do the the explicit analysis. Okay. Now, before going to the explicit analysis, uh, let's discuss briefly which are the uncertainties for this kind of process. Let's start from the statistical errors. Okay. Now, what do we expect for this process? Of course, at low energy, it will be dominated by the systematic uncertainties. Okay. The means which are more important, as I was writing here, are the ones uh, close to 1 TB. Okay? Close to 1 TB, there are some analysis already by CMS and Atlas, which take TB tell us that in the beans uh, with an invariant mass of order 500 GB to 1 TB, there is more or less 10% systematic, 10% total error. So, so here you, you didn't consider the fourth fermion operator? Or? I 
we discussed it, uh, it is an equivalent yeah, formulation yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah. You can rewrite these operators as for permanent operators as well. But I will talk about this later. Okay. Because I remember the W and Y in principles from the intuition motion, you know. Yes. They just I will discuss this after this. Right. And yes. I think that's the reason that why W and Y contributed to this. It's, it's an equivalent yeah, way yeah. to see it. These are two equivalent, two equivalent uh, ways to see the same thing. Of course, this tells you that this is growth. The, the four permanent operators also tell you that uh, there is this growth. Yeah. And I believe it's because the equation motion and the two are the same. That's precisely why the S and T doesn't really contribute directly for the tails, but the W and the Y. Uh, you can see it also from me. I didn't even without the equation motion. This does the change of the, of the two-point function without additional derivatives, so you can go again. Now, there is this 10% error. Okay. Sorry, I just have another point. So, this is actually the, the thing that if I just uh, you know, switch this diagram by 90 degrees, this will be just the same the deep elastic region. So, so, I mean, comparing to the, the bounds you can get from the FC, are they now, are they actually even more stringent than the all the deep elastic region if your left one is. Uh, Electron or not? It's not very good. <coughs> so, you, so the louder as you see, you know, die electron, you know, production is more stringent. I mean, there is less data, there is also low energy physics, like the scattering of. Right, right. The I remember in the past. There are some operations for which LEC constraints are better than the ones coming from low energy data. So, the as you see, now it's already past the uh, low energy uh, DPS. It's an operator, not the other day. In some for some operators, the constraints are better at the LHC, but not to obtain the spinning of the LHC. It's something I'm showing here as well. So, this is not the only one in which you can improve. This is an example of them in which they are in particular. I remember in the past, the DP Lafayette collision is the most stringent bound of the election. Well, probably now this has changed. It's definitely a bit left. It's a uh, yes, but I don't know if, uh, if now I can see if they will still have this. So, um, so let's go back. This is the ten percent total error, okay, and, uh, in this beam, more or less. <coughs> now this is uh, basically it's basically total coming from statistical error, okay, because the systematic error is of the order 2-3% only. Okay? So this means that there is a large room for improvement in this kind of, uh, of um, analysis. But already, HTB, we can try to extract some bound that is on the alternative on the coefficient of this operator. Sorry, do you call all the strange 1D or I didn't actually? No, the analysis, this, this was confused, I remember correctly. Because it's a very high energy beam, so they don't go. Uh, so, so, so you only have to look at the number of events in this the low other curve or you know, other. No, we, we consider the whole, the whole region, okay? But this is just to get to give you an idea okay. of to compare with this uh, naive expectation, okay? Then we will consider all the beams, and in the lower beams, uh, the the error is dominated by systematics, okay? Already in the previous bin, the error is of the order of 2 3 percent. Okay? Dominated by systematics. So only in the very last bin, okay, the error is dominated by statistics. At, at 8TB. At 8TB will change the situation, of course. Oh. They will go. What would be the theory around I'm discussing it now. So this is the experimental error, okay? Now, which is the theory error? Now, this process is known, uh, is computed at level MMLO in this D, okay? with, with the scale, uh, scale variation uncertainty of the order of the percent. Okay. Moreover, the MLO electroweak corrections are also computed. So also from this other uh, point of view, this process is quite accurate. 
Of course, another thing to keep into account are PDF errors. Okay. Now, PDF errors become of the order of 10% only when we go at energies of the order 4, 5 TV, which is way above the region we will consider, even at 14 TV. Okay. So PDF errors are at most comparable to this 10% accuracy in the very last week. In all the rest of the region, below this 500 GB, the error is percentage. Okay. So this also is under control. There is another thing which uh, may seem surprising at the beginning, but it's not. So the, to this process, there is also some contribution initiated by gammas okay, in the program. And there was an issue. Uh, even one year ago, with the PDF for the photons in the, in the, in the, in the proton. Okay. However, now the accuracy of the PDF, thanks to the work by Gavin, Julian, and others, went down dramatically to a percent level. Okay. And so, this contribution is now very precise now. So, it does not affect our prediction. Before the, the, the error of the PDF, of the photon was 100%. And in that situation, it, was, it, it, give, and it gives an error comparable with this 10%. So, a non negligible one. Now it's totally under control. Okay. So, overall, you can really achieve this 10% accuracy in the very last bin, 1 TV. And below, we can obtain a precision of order 2 10%. Okay. Now, which are the results? I will try to draw here the, the plot. Now, this is for HPV and HC. Okay. We have W times The left bound is something like this. Okay? So of the order of 10 to minus 3. Okay? What is the LHC bound of the LHC? Unfortunately, for the moment, only the, the only public data for these distributions in band mass or PT are known only for the neutral process, L plus and minus, and not for lepton neutrino. Okay? So we can have reliable a recast only of the plus and minus. In this case, the bounce gives something like this. Okay? So, sorry, so does this contain the uh, theoretical uncertainty? Yes. It yes. contains? Yes. But, but you would say that the theoretical uncertainty uh, can be like 3%. Yes. So, but you are, you are, you are, you are reaching into more than 3%, into smaller than 3%? Or? Of course, but uh, this is uh, the coefficient of the operators. Okay? A, a precision, as I told you here, yeah, a precision 10% at the TV uh -huh. corresponds to a per mil precision of the coefficient of this operator in the scaled like a flap. Okay? You define the oh, operator okay. with the coefficient like a flap in the units of, of this. Uh, a, a, per se, a per mil correction at, at left corresponds to per mil size of the coefficient, which corresponds to 10% correction at the TV. For this reason, we are able to gain precision on this, uh, on this coefficient, because the difference with respect to the standard model grow at high energy. So actually, I have another comment or just my feeling, is that uh, beside this uh, your dilapton, Constraints. I believe that if you look at the the dipole which are the TTC, the essential of the TTC bound, I believe the essential of the TTC bound can be also transmitted into the constraints on the W and Y. Mm. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, because essentially the, is, the TGC... This is experimentally way cleaner. This is theoretically so way the, cleaner. The, huh? the, the diposity in any case, even if there is a growth with the energy, okay? It's something... I you think it's much less than the constraint here. Yes. It's much more difficult to see that channel. 
okay? So because the interference is, I will discuss the bosons afterwards, no. okay? There are many more difficulties, for sure at the TV you can do anything. <coughs> Maybe you can do something of this level at the ironiosity of HC, okay? But for sure you want to fix this for these two operators. For other ones, yes, which cannot be tested here, yeah, yes. But this is way cleaner than with, with a way larger cross-section. But I will discuss the bosons afterwards. So the bounce now, I said TB in one direction, okay, in this direction are comparable with the left one, okay, the order <coughs> per mil. In the other direction, instead, there is a, a flat direction for this process, just a combination of WI for which this, uh, this process is blind at least at the linear level, okay, and so we get this much longer lips. And the closure is due to the quadratic effect. Yes, this is due to the quadratic effect, or you can uh, you can also obtain this closure by by considering the uh, angular distributions. Okay. Okay. So quadratic effects are not really necessary. So, so how much are yeah. from the total production? How much is from the, the angle distribution of the, the lab? This is basically from the not total cross section, from the beam the cross section invariant mass distribution. So you, you don't uh, use the well, information from the, the angle? Uh, from the now, if you use it for HTB, it doesn't change much. For, for what? It doesn't change much? At HTB. Oh. You can also use that, but at HTB it doesn't change much. Why? Because uh, so the angular distribution in a large part of the parameter space is basically the same. So you don't have uh, different uh, combination of WI in different regions. Okay, to exploit the different uh, correlations, the different uh, combination of WI, you need to go to some corners of the parameter space where the cross section is accidentally small. So, until you cross a certain threshold of uh, luminosity, you can do anything. So, it can only help in the very fat tail at the TB, which is comparable to what you do with the quadratic pieces. Now, so the bounce, let's see from this plot. Not very accurate. That are not so far from the left, left one. Okay, already, already with the, with this data published by the experimenter. Now, of course, you can ask uh, what happens if I include uh, left and neutrino, which could improve a lot the situation because it's uh, sensitive only on, on uh, W. We did this kind of analysis, uh, assuming a five percent systematic uncertainty on this. Uh, uh, on this process, which is comparable to what uh, the experimentalists show. So the problem is that the experimentalists don't show the PT distribution. They show the total cross-section with this error, but not the PT distribution. In this case, we cannot uh, recast this analysis. So we need uh, our own estimates. Uh, and in this case, one finds uh, a very narrow strip in Y. Okay, so the found on Y is of the order uh, uh, bounding up, sorry, is of the order 0 0.5 times tensor minus 3. Maybe I exaggerated it. And this is clearly better than left. Okay? If we combine the two, we find a precision comparable with the left one. And on, <coughs> on W, the precision is even better. Okay? When should I pass over the measurement of this? The experimentalists have this. They told me that they have the PT distribution, but they didn't put them in the paper. So it is not public. But <laughs> can't he use the MT distribution, for example? The transverse mass distribution of the electron degree? They don't give them. No, more, more precisely, they don't give the correlations across different transverse masses, so it's impossible to perform differential fit. They don't give the full data, data, which is given for the left and neutrino, so you cannot recast this if you don't have all correlations or errors and so on. Well, can you ask them? We ask them, and they say that they will, they will do it in the future. By the way, for the moment, they don't even have the full unfolded errors, which would be needed for this analysis. For the IGC? Hmm? For ATV, IGC? So now this is the HTV, okay, which already is quite encouraging. If we go to higher energy, of course, for TV, the situation that you can imagine is much much better than this. And indeed, on this plot, I can probably 
show you how the, the other becomes. Uh, so the projection at high energy ellipse uh, is something like this uh, for the neutral process. Okay. And the, the projection for the new <laughs> for W is uh, an extremely thin string here. Okay, I can give you the, the numbers, uh, which is better. So the bound for W, this is so this is saying T B. And thirteen T B the bound for W is uh, of the order 10 to minus uh, so 4 and bound for Y is of the order 3 times 10 to minus 4. Okay? So I factor with you better than the uh, than left. Okay? But to also ask what happens at future colliders. Hopefully the central value will be away from C. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so if you are interested in also in one of the TP colliders, then we gain another order of money. Okay? This is 10 to the spider. Why of the order of 10 to the What? For which name is it? I mean the first TV. What do you mean? For which? No, 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 no. Ah, yes. No, no. This is for uh, 300. More or less. Okay. That will win us in a few days. So, no, no. Already with 300, you can reach uh, an accuracy like this. We have some comparison. We have some comparison with electron colliders, uh, and this is better. So for sure, the only TV collider is better than the lepton collider. No, my question was whether 13 TV or 300 or something part is better than the CC or comparable to the CC. To this, I asked 13 TV. CC TV with respect to to the circular replacement. Ah, FCC EE. No, I guess this is still better. No, do you remember this? Let me check. You're asking. 300 LHC versus FCC. They say full, full 13 TB. We have a table in the paper now. I don't have it. Yeah, let me look. Okay, I'll do. Why? This is coming in five years, and the other is coming in four. You can check it. Yeah, sorry, one sec. Why do you want to say either the hard one slider? It also depends on your coupling is strong or weak. Because it brought down the fact that if you see all this very down or not. I will discuss the theory breakdown in a moment. Yeah, F. LHC 300 is competitive with FCC EE. LHC 3000 beats FCC EE. Okay. LHC is bad. LHC is good because it has now. Now, uh, of course, the other question is validity of BFT. Okay? So I put this bound, but I'm considering events which have an invariant mass of the order of TV. So are we sure that uh, we can reach such correction for WY? with a cut of the maximal of 1 TB. Now, it's what I will try to test here. Of course, one way to do this is to consider the cut of as a free parameter of your effective theory. Okay? And to plot the bounds as a function of the cut off you impose for your events. Okay? Now, although we can consider the cut off as a free quantity, there are some constraints. Okay, there is a maximal cutoff you can put uh, depending on the EFT description. For the one I showed you here, so this, uh, let's call it uh, the four factor <coughs> feature. Okay. In which you write uh, a WY in this form. So, zero W. Squared. Okay. This corresponds to the physics, uh, which is uh, coupled directly only to the gauge bosons, okay, and not directly to fermions. And we get the maximal cutoff, which is uh, of the order of n w over the maximum maximum of the square root of w or the square root of y. Okay. Now, this bound comes from uh, assuming that the correction induced by these operators to the propagators are, not, are smaller than the standard model uh, contributions. Okay? So, this is a kind of perturbative bound in this 
this kind of uh, this kind of thing. However, as uh, we were discussing before, there is an equivalent way to recast these operators uh, through equations of motion and go to a contact uh, operator speaker, okay, in which W Y are written in this way, G square over 2 and W square, W, J and mu A, J and mu A, okay? So it's a four fermion operator built from the left hand current of this standard model. And Y corresponds to the analogous path for the, the hypercharge current. Y, J, Y, mu, J, Y, mu. Now, to pass from this to that, we need to, to perform a filter definition, okay, and use integrations of motion. This kind of picture is a bit weird because we assume that the new physics only talks to the standard model currents, okay? And uh, I don't know any fully justified uh, new physics model which just is this, which is not just of that form. In any case, in the we can also apply the same principle to this kind of... Uh, Do they mean something to say something that gives this that is not just of that form because they are the exact same thing? They are not exactly the same thing because they are additional operators. At dimension 8. Right? At dimension 8. No, but if you have uh, someone, someone who couples just the formulas, you know, mm -hmm. in a universal way. Just just but why should it couple just with this current? Because it's a triple. Yeah. There's some new triplet vector to do something very much like that. That's true. Mm. But this is also a generation universal. Generation universal. Generation universal triplet. It's better to be there if we can see it anyway. Maybe. Otherwise, the flavor bounds will be a disaster. This one is a bit more weird. Right. We have a single current which couples exactly like the other. Yeah, we're getting more of the hyper charge. But if it is again, the other charge is just the this is no not just of this form. Okay. Now, the point I want to make here is that uh, the cutoff in principle for this other feature is different than the, the other one. If you impose just perturbativity adding these operators, the cutoff is higher than that one. Okay. And this uh, higher by a lot is higher by a factor 4 pi over g. Tangent of theta one, theta weak, square root of y. Okay, <coughs> this is just imposing perturbativity. Which is defined as the standard model contribution is the same as the push of contribution. Yes. What? Okay, but in any case, if you do the computation in these two, you find different cutoffs. Okay? Now, the trick is the fact that when you pass from one to the other, but for the first with the eye that you the find cutoff for the first case? That the connection to the propagators do not uh, exceed the standard. Okay, in one case you require perturbativity, in one you don't require, right? So if you require the, the cross section to be non perturbative, you will get the same result. Yes. Now here you are requiring it should be as big as standard model, which is very perturbative. There is something, on top, there is something on top of this that uh, if you go to a, to a large cutoff, uh, and you pass from one to the other, dimension eight operators in there become large. So you cannot really match the two because you have but a higher it dimension operators five which are large. Right? If you are below this cutoff, uh, you can pass from one to the other, and you don't have any problem. If you go above this, uh, you get the dimension eight uh, and so on operators, which become larger when you pass from one to the other. So they are not equivalent anymore. Okay? So this is, uh, let's say, the, 
the safe cutoff. For this, you're, you're finding whichever description you want. So you treat this as two different theories because you assume that dimension eight <coughs> operators vanish. They, 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 are, they are sublinking with respect to dimension six. Yes. This, this was my original one. And, and they're subleading to the extent that they provide no error to your analysis whatsoever. Yes. Okay. So that's a strong assumption. It's a strong assumption, yes. But given that this is less justified, I would use this cutoff as, as the one uh, I want to compare with. So as far as I'm in this picture and uh, my result makes sense, I'm safe. Okay, if I want to push to this I'm other... Not, I'm not sure you're safe saying that there's no error in dimension 8 in generic new physics scenarios. There's no reason that should be true. But no error means 10%. Uh, right, you're in TEV and your cutoff is where? I will show you the cutoff. Okay. So why does it say that before square root of y? So TW, so the tangent of the uh, ah, theta, 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 yes. So, there are some constraints on polynomial operators. I don't know if they have the exact. One. I thought there would be for Dirac-Tan final states. What? Sorry, if any of you. Like I thought there would be LSCMS published constraints on polynomial operators for like a Dirac-Tan final state. There are other analyses, yes, of constraints of that. And that matches. For Fermion, uh, for Fermion, uh, for Fermion, uh, for Fermion, uh, for Fermion, 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 for I will say to check this uh, the validity there. We can do the analysis, okay, reporting the results as a function of the. But again, Julian, so sorry that I don't go in with this question. But so why they are not providing the? We we'll never arrive to the second part. Okay. No, no, go, go, go. <laughs> no, no, no. Just yes. why the parameters are not because. They are not doing it for ATV, who knows what they are going to do for 13 TV. No, they told us that they will do that for uh, 13 TV. They are going to do it. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but then this, I don't know. I hope they will. Now, what happens if you, if you plot your results as a function of the cutoff? That is, uh, a cut I put on the invariant mass of the events I'm considering in my analysis, okay? So, 200, 500, 1000, 2000, and 5000. Now, so, 1, 1, and 10. And this is W or Y times 10 to the 3, okay? Now, first of all, I can use this relation obtain a maximal value for WY given the cutoff, okay? And this will cut uh, off a region like this, okay? This is for uh, this lower cutoff, not for the I1. For the I1, you wouldn't see this uh, the plot because it's a factor of another magnitude So, in this region, my effective field theory is not valid anymore. So, if my bound for C, I cannot say anything in any consistent way. So I need to be here in order to say something sensible. Our bounds fall in this region. So our bounds are something like this. Okay? This is uh, for W, the, the one for Y is slightly, slightly higher. Okay? And these are, are our bounds for, uh, this is uh, 13 TV. 300 inverse pentagon. Okay? Now we can see two things. First of all, we are in the loud region. Okay? So our bounds are, are valid in sensible effective field theories. Second, our bounds are saturated year round. Okay? So if we cut the events above 3 dB, okay, the bound remains the same. Okay? 
So, if, as far as the cutoff is above 30 dB, we are safe. We are not doing something strange with our EFT. Okay? So, if the cutoff is 3 dB, just to do some quick numerology, I'll tell you, you have events at 1 TeV. A moment, the numerology, I, I put it on this axis, I guess I... Uh, so, you can associate to this uh, a scale of the physics which uh, can produce this kind of effects. No, no, that's not what I mean. I mean the errors. The if, error. if your cutoff is 3 TeV, if your event is 1 TeV, then the correction from an additional power of E squared over lambda squared is 10%. Yes. Which is fine. Well, that means that the error can matter in that circumstance. It should be included in your error budget. No, by the way, this is the 13 TV. Okay? 13 TV. At 8 TV, it is saturated around the 1 TV. Okay, 8 TV, 1 sub 5 TV. So that's better even, because now you say you can have a cutoff as 1 TV, you use a 1 TV event, and your error is 100%. But actually, your cutoff must be larger than this. Yes. Larger. So the the x-axis shows how the bound weakens as you vary as you the range you look at. Events, so you, you can choose you can, from no. So you can choose lambda cut to be what you want. Yes. So just look at the range you want. It's just a so it's a dial. Where I want it to be is somewhere where the LHC might find a particle, maybe, or the you, 100 you, TV collider might find a particle. You're setting new bounds for almost the whole range as you vary the dial. So if, if your model is at 5 TV and you want to put the dial at 1 TV. For instance, if I want you, you choose how safe you want it. For instance, if I want to to associate this region, okay, this bound, to a new physics scale, at which I must put the necessary my cutoff, I find that uh, if I assume that this is generated by some uh, new vector resonances, okay, with a coupling comparable with the electroweak one, now, this kind of value for WI are generated by resonances at 8 dB. So I can go with my cutoff up to 8 dB to obtain this value of WI, and in this case, the corrections will be small, so they, they will be under control. Yeah, there are a few percent. Right? Which uh, is below 10 percent, maybe. Okay? So the error, uh, so the analysis basically consistent with the, with the assumption of neglecting these other operators. Of course, if you want, you can cut a bit higher, okay, a bit before. The, the bound will be a bit worse, but it won't be dramatically worse. Okay. So, depending on your UV completion, you will know where your cutoff is. You can estimate the, the kind of other corrections you have, and you can see which region of this uh, plot applies. But this is, uh, a, let's say, a power count independent statement. Okay? Or, it's a UV physics dependent Sorry, really, really, yes. Yes, which you can translate it into power count. depending on the class of theories you want to test, you can use these bounds in a different way. Okay. There is no you way. You see the bounds that you use essentially transmitted to the, the carbon is essentially smaller than the last three. The bounds that they use Okay, this can be turned also in bounds on, uh, on new vector resonances, for instance, okay? Now, this shows you that uh, you can arrive to 8 TV, 10 TV for, for some other analysis. For instance, in the full LHC, you can go down to something like 10 TV. And this, this will give bounds stronger than the direct ones if this new resonance has a coupling which is of the order of the electronic one. Okay? If the new resonance is too strongly coupled, it stays direct uh, a measurement to better. Okay. How much time do we have? Can I summarize the resistance? We stay chairman. Everybody's trying to leave here. Everybody wants to leave. I mean, the French have to go. Now, then, uh, I will adapt. Uh,
Okay, so I, I will short the answer we got there. Type boson. Now, we have seen this channel uh, selected because it's particularly simple. Okay, now we want to see if other channels can be enjoyed. Now, which other channels can we think about? Uh, of course, uh, we want uh, always large cross sections of small errors. So, two to two processes uh, are the natural uh, uh, candidates for this. The ones we have seen uh, are basically for fermion processes, okay? two to two scattering suspensions. But we can as well think of scatterings going to bosons, okay? either eight bosons or Xs, or even processes like W scattering and so on. Now, we have seen that this process works. Okay? Here we can really improve the bounds with respect to what can we hope to see or to do with the other processes? Now, these two, as you can imagine, are more challenging. This is basically a very small cross section. So, going to leptonic channels uh, seems difficult. Okay. So, I will focus on this second one, trying to see what we can do. This is a, is a, a mixed situation. The cross section is relatively large, still, but uh, you need to pay the pressure ratios, for instance, to leptons, which reduces the number of events of your, your uh, available for the, the, um, for the analysis. There is also an additional uh, problem when you want to use these other channels in order to, to do precision, and it's the fact that uh, the interference I talked about at the beginning works in a tricky way for all these channels. Okay? As uh, Alex and collaborators showed, there are only you're on the paper, right? Well, no, ah, the other Alex. This is actually an analysis. This is an analysis. Which analysis? What you say when you are sitting over there? Coincidence. Exactly, alignment. So, only very few channels have interference at leading order. Okay? In particular, for fermion is one which has interference at leading order. A little they not assume out of Other channels which have interference at leading order in the expansion of MW over the energy, okay? are these ones. Fermion, fermion to uh, longitudinal polarization of the vector bosons or Xs, or the one with four longitud longitudinal polarizations. There is a further uh, negative point in this the fact that in the standard model, these processes are suppressed with respect to the analogous ones with transverse <coughs> polarization. Okay? To give you an idea, for instance, if we look at this process, longitudinal, longitudinal, okay, from fermions, this is something like 0 0.002 times the cross section for the corresponding transverse process. So this means there is interference, but we need to dig it out from a much larger background, which is given basically by the same process, just with a different polarization. So this makes our life harder. A process in which we could try to do this job okay, is WZ production. Why WZ? It has a large cross section, okay? In this process we can test some operators such as this, O3, left, this is the, an operator in the walls of basis. This induces a growth with the energy of the longitudinal polarization. Okay, 
so we can try to do the same job. The problem is that uh, the amplitude for the transverse part, the plus minus minus plus, is much larger than the amplitude for the zero zero. How much larger? Well, basically, if we take the ratio, okay, sigma longitudinal over sigma total, this is six uh, percent. So you could say, okay, hopeless. No, there is a trick. I will not talk about this time. Uh, and the trick is the fact that the amplitude for the, um, for the transfer polarization is an accidental zero for central scattering. Yes. What about ZH or WH here also? The yes, those also can work. Yes. You can but there also the longitudinal is kind of yes. is much smaller than the trans. But there, there is no transverse right? energy with the age. So there, there is interference, but there, there are other problems because uh, you need to see the x. <laughs> so if you go to. For you, say you don't have this uh, problem of picking up from. No, but there you have other problems of uh, looking at the signal. <laughs> so, so um, no, this is common. Now, the important point is that uh, if you look at the, at the amplitude as a function of the scattering angle, okay, you find that the longitudinal modes have this uh, shape, whereas the transverse modes which dominate in the forward direction because of the T channel enhancement are suppressed in the central region. So, if you look at your process here, you can, try, you can dig out the longitudinal part, suppressing the transverse part, and if you do the computation, you can call this, this is quite efficient, if you cut the cost theta smaller than 0 0.5, and for instance, uh, MWZ larger than 500, or let's, let's say 300, okay? The fraction longitudinal becomes. Yeah, what's the bound of this operator from left? The bound of this operator. There is no direct bound on this. There is a bound on an analogous operator which is S. Okay. So okay. this one doesn't spell WZDK? Or... Yeah, of course, this contributes to the WNZ coupling. So, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is a bound. There is a bound. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but it's uh, the per mil order, as you mm -hmm. so the, the bound is per mil order on the complete oh, okay. of this. There are several operators, so it depends on the, on the combination of operators in their order. Now, there are, some, there are several theories in which this is the, the analysis of the S parameter, and there the bound is per mil. If you turn on other operators, you can disentangle the two. This is not exactly the same combination yeah, right. as there. There are several operators you can turn on and okay. uh, to give a rough idea, let's say, per mil. You can claim if you say that everything else is zero, okay? You turn on only this and then you get the connection. If you turn on other operators, you can say it's a thing. You have to say something else. Yes. yes. But to give a rough idea, let's say we want to compare with the permit. Okay? Now, this is the leading order picture. Unfortunately, when you go to the next leading order, the picture becomes like this. Yeah. Yeah. So, next to leading, you mean real emission, right? No. Most, this is mostly the real emission, yes. Now, unfortunately, the longitudinal don't go. <laughs> they stay the same. Only the transfers become larger. However, this enhancement is mostly real emission. Okay. And so, we can hope to keep this under control 
e if we put something like a jet beetle. Indeed, the extra jet associated to this real emission is relatively hard. So a jet beetle but it can be perfectly forward, no? Hmm? It, can, it causes this effect by shifting the protonic center of mass energy of the two quarks. So it could be right down the beam pipe and you never see it. Mm -hmm. Also be, yes. yeah, it's 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 you, you cannot cut all of them. Yeah. But I'm saying that with a bit on the jet, for instance, uh, 100 GB, okay, you can reduce this uh, more or less to this level, so comparable with the longitudinal. Of course, you cannot cut all of them. There will be some because they are forward, because the, the jet is uh, less hard that you can beat, and indeed. Uh, this near zero is gone, but still you can enhance enough the longitude and the displacement of the transverse by putting a centrality cut and a kind of beta. To which data is this? That's the part I'm confused about, I guess. With which? What, what is this data? W. The scattering. The scattering over the partonic center of mass energy? Okay. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. The cost of, ah, sorry. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I understand you, was, you were asking cos theta. Yes, yeah. this is the. <coughs> so this is a delta eta cut. This is the yeah. scattering theta, angle. the scattering angle, the polar scattering yeah. angle of the, of the W and Z. This is a leading order. Next to leading, you can find it with respect to the boost of the system. Mm -hmm. Let's say a leading order is this. So, when you do this, uh, you're back in business, so you can try to do this analysis. If we did this analysis, uh, unfortunately, in Magnac, uh, this operator uh, is not there. So there is no card which gives it directly this operator. We have analogous ones, because we need this uh, next to leading order. Leading order is quite simple to put it, but next to leading, uh, we use the existing uh, model. So, it's just a model gives you an analog out of box view. Or you need to ask them. If? If existing model gives you an law out of box, or you should ask them? No, I think it's an law out of box. But only for this operator. Okay. <laughs> so OHW. Only for this one, right? Or H W, H B, and okay, two others, but, but not that one. And they do not have a complete basis, so you cannot even go there. So, so it's the last the version of MathGraph output. No, this is an additional model which is not in the standard. Uh, ah, I should download it separately. Yeah, these are characters. So, so what I kind of spectral it. distribution modification yeah. we produce? With the standard models, if I ask another model. You measure the RUC and then how you express right, it. But this is similar to WC. Yeah, so you, you look at the equivalent mass yeah. distribution and okay. you see that the tail will, will start to deviate quadratically from the so, so the tail of the distribution okay, will start to deviate quadratically with respect to the other. So exactly the same analysis you do for the for the dialectal so the, the only tricky part here is that of course you have a neutrino, so you need to reconstruct the neutrino, and you have to put these extra cuts in order to get rid of uh, most of the next to living order effects. Once you do this, uh, you can find the bounce on this operator. Okay. U H W U A. Okay, which also gives a growth with the energy. So basically, it's analogous to this. Okay, for the part which grows with the energy, it doesn't make any difference using one or the other. And what we find is that the bound is a preliminary result. Is of the order. Two times spectral strength. So also in this case uh, we can reach uh, the depth accuracy, but this uh, is about only at the high luminosity LHC. This process is much much dirtier than the electron. So if you want uh, H to Z gamma decays, what precision do we Because this operator gives me H to Z gamma. H to Z gamma, no, you can only Okay, it's 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 because you can have an double. If you have one operator, you can go to some place else. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. But I yeah. guess yeah. that it can be compared to the Fermi. Uh, right. Right. Yes, the Fermi. No, it's, it's close. 
Because the standard model is a loop, right? But, a direction. Direction. It has no but in any case, direction. there are several operators, right. Right. so you can disentangle them. Okay? So each of these bounds makes sense. Okay? And they are basically independent because you can turn on different operations like S. For instance, if you want to compare with S, there is a, there is a way. So if you go to universal theories, for instance, <coughs> the last. Uh, <laughs> the universal theories. Okay, you have that S is a combination of these two operators. Whereas the, the combination we are proving basically is delta G1 delta. Okay? CW plus CHW mg squared over lambda squared. In universal theories, you find that this CHW is suppressed and CW and CP basically are the same. Okay? So CW versus CB and CHW, CHB are small. So you find the estimate that S8 is equal to delta G1Z. Okay. Now, delta G1Z is the same effect as this at high energy. So the scaling is quadratic as well. So you can put basically the same bound. This bound does it come from the electronic channel? Or the electronic channel, yes. Is it clear that you want to have the adding of It's not clear. But, uh, because it's 5 you don't uh, you don't try to know to reconstruct the problem. problem. Yes. We suspect that uh, going anonic uh, put more background and put more, more difficult to have low systematics. But we are not 100% sure. So for the moment we started with electronic analysis, which is simple. Because for Fukushima, that will use the not bad, uh, not bad efficiencies. And now if it comes with the with Z that you But also, time. but you need also. Low systematics. <laughs> you need also low systematics. Not only low efficiency. Not only high efficiency. The systematics are lower. Which is amazing, but it's true. For the for the channel of the W. Uh, yeah. So maybe we should look at that. So these are very preliminary, okay? Obtain uh, from these because just, just that's the simpler one. Oh, that's 